All right, so here's the last piece of a business intelligence system. It is the data publishing piece of that because it's good enough to have your analysis that can be really important, but then you want to be able to publish it so that the people who need to actually work with your results can work with it. They need to be able to access your results in a timely manner. They need to be able to get updates on if you know your data has updated and they need to be able to um, actually use that information for their purposes. So that's where data publishing comes in. So when we're talking about things that we are publishing, we're talking about reports. They're documents that display business information. This is going to be stuff like the analyses that you've performed on data. So the outputs of the data analysis step will end up in a report that people can access. They must be targeted to their user, they must be timely, and they must be accurate. So if you have a marketing professional, they probably don't need to know a lot of technical details of inventory, stocking, and procedures, all that kind of stuff. They have to be timely, they have to be up to date. If you have out of date information, that can lead to inaccurate decisions being made. And of course, they must be accurate. They must actually reflect the um, state of the world that you're trying to measure with your data and your information. And you know, going back to the idea of the uh, testing your results, um, especially the idea of like the correlation versus causation kind of stuff, um, you really want to make sure that your analyses are accurate before you actually give them as a report. Because otherwise, um, someone might make a bad decision, business could get in a lot of hot water, economically or otherwise, and then if it comes back to you, that's rough, right? So you don't, you don't want that. Reports should be accurate. And then we'll use a business intelligence uh, server to actually publish these documents, publish these results so that people can access them. Uh, now, of course, back in the day this would have been paper reports and you would have had to actually deliver pieces of paper to people and then it kind of went to email chains um actually like emailing people you know that still would count as using a bi server now because you're using an email server in order to transmit documents but then we have more fancy things that we'll actually be talking about through this video we've got two types of reports that we're looking at we have static reports and dynamic reports. Static are probably what you immediately think of when you think of a report. It's a document that you create it and then it doesn't change after you've created. Uh, you essentially update the information by creating a new document. You're creating a new version of that information. Stuff like PDF documents are going to be a static report. So if you have a, a sales report that you type up, you turn it into a PDF and then you email it to your entire department that's a static report. You are emailing, you're giving out uh, business information in a static report. Um, and it has a low skill floor. You don't need a lot of technical knowledge in order to use a static report because typically it's as easy as typing up a document or a presentation or something like that. This is opposed to a dynamic report. Um, which can be updated at the time that they are requested. So you can tell the server that you're using, hey, I want a report, please. And the server will actually update the information. It might either run a new analysis or it might retrieve the results of the latest analysis from some sort of database where that's stored. And then it can come back and say, okay, here's this report with all the latest information. So you can actually generate them on the fly if you're using the right application. That might require a BI, a business intelligence application to access the data source. A business intelligence application is just going to be some application that you use to interface with the um, actual server that the information is stored on. Um, this, it may not be a, business, a specific application. It might be as easy as accessing a web server on your web browser, like Firefox or something like that. And then they can 
get the request from there and generate the report and display it on all on the web browser. That's not uncommon. It has a sky a high skill floor to actually create the dynamic reports though, because uh, it can get really complicated setting up the systems, figuring out the integration, um, you know, fail safe checking, like ch checking for uh, failures in the analysis before sharing results, all that kind of stuff. You, al you also have to think about like managing permissions. So if some unauthorized user tries to get in there, are they actually going to be able to access it? Or is your system going to be able to catch that and deny them access? And that's another thing a person managing a server that gives dynamic reports would have to think about. Now, I want to come back to this chart that we saw before. Uh, this gave the activities of the business intelligence system. And I want to specifically point out this publish results part and then how they have the push and the pull to knowledge workers side of things. That refers actually to the two different types of publishing. There's a push publish where the actual business intelligence server delivers the report to the knowledge workers. And then there's the poll publish where you make the knowledge workers request that uh, information from the server and then the server delivers it once they've already given the request. So the difference between push and poll is whether or not they request it automatically or whether or not it gets sent to them automatically or whether or not they request it as they need it. So I want to keep that difference in mind. Right here is a table of alternatives for business intelligence publishing. These are all the different ways that you could possibly um, publish information that you have gathered through your analysis. What you'll see here is that we list the different types of servers, um, everything from email to web server to actual business intelligence server. There's the type of report, that's the static and dynamic report. Uh, push options talks about how you can actually push information to a user uh, if you have push publishing, if you're using push publishing, and the skill level needed to operate that type of server. Now what you'll notice is that there's not actually a poll option on the publishing alternatives table, and the reason why is that every single server poll publishing works the exact same way, which is the user asks, uh, makes a request for the information that inf that request is authenticated to make sure the, inf the information is present and the user is actually allowed to see it. And then they, um, and then the server, if everything is good, then just gives the information back to the user. So that's all the same, no matter what. Regardless, uh, the different server types, we have a email or collaboration tool. So a collaboration tool is something like OneDrive slash Office 365. Um, that would also be Google Drive. Um, maybe uh, when you're talking about email, that's just emailing your document to everyone as opposed to putting it on a OneDrive or something like that. So that really only works with static reports. You create a report, you send it out to everyone, when everything updates, you create a new report, you send it out to everyone or you know, share it on OneDrive or Google or something. Uh, it's manual, which means that you have to specifically send out your report to everyone. And then the skill level needed is very low because it's very easy to upload a document to OneDrive or something like that. Next, we have the web server. The web server is just a very basic server. It, it functions pretty much like a website that someone can go on and they can actually click on a page and see the report result. This allows for static or dynamic report types. Static would essentially just be a page with the report on it, and then you have to make a new page or edit the existing page when you have um, new information and that creates a new result. You can also have dynamic. You can have the web server actually make a request uh, and then generate the new report from the analysis on the fly without you ever having to change the actual website. It just You just have code that does it automatically for you. 
Now you can set it so that your users get alerted. Um, what that would mean is essentially they get some kind of notification. Maybe they get like an email notification or something like that. The user can choose to uh, sort of subscribe, essentially subscribe to be notified when the update happens. If you are familiar with using YouTube, it's sort of like a YouTube subscription uh, with the, the bell turned on. Uh, RSS, on the other hand, uh, there's this thing called an RSS feed which kind of works a little bit like a live news feed where um, you can subscribe to a particular RSS feed and then when an update happens, information about that update will actually get put to the top of your feed and then you can see, hey, there's an RSS update notification. And if you use podcasts at all, if you listen to podcasts, that's actually... Uh, an implementation of an RSS feed. Podcasts used RSS from the very beginning, and they actually still do, to notify whatever application you're watching the podcast on that, hey, there's a new episode of this podcast, and the application will then proceed to download it as soon as you get that RSS update. Uh, for static skill level, it's very low skill. Uh, the basics that you need are just learning how to do HTML, which is not the hardest thing in the world to learn. If it's dynamic, that gets a lot trickier because you actually have to make responsive websites that can query a server for information and then update that website in place. So that can be a little bit trickier. Now, the other types of alternatives are very similar. Um, you have SharePoint, which you can think of as being similar to OneDrive, but with a lot more configuration. You can do a lot more with SharePoint than you can OneDrive. Um, a little bit outside of the scope of this class, we're not really going to worry too much about SharePoint here. Um, but essentially the report types and push options skill level needed, very similar. And then you actually have a business intelligence server, which does not usually does not do static reports. It's all dynamic. Um, same type of push options, and it's a very, very high skill level. They have people who spend a lot of time learning this kind of stuff. In fact, that's what uh, information systems really gets into, is how to set up these kinds of servers. And we'll get into a little more detail on what a BI server does. But the information systems set of classes is where you would want to go if you're really interested in this idea of generating uh dynamic reports. Also, computer science would also be a good um, thought as well if you like the idea of using the web servers or BI servers or that kind of stuff. We're not really going to get into it. Computer science also is really good for the stuff like data mining and big data type of stuff. Like computer science and data science are the two big areas if you like those ideas. If you really like doing the analysis side of things. So that's that. But yeah, that's the table. Now, a business intelligence server specifically, as opposed to like a general web server, which has a lot of different purposes, a business intelligence server has very specific functions. It has the management function, which maintains metadata about authorized allocation of business intelligence results to users. So who's allowed to see it? Um, what data do we need to show? And this can actually be dependent on the role a specific person has in a specific department because a marketing person doesn't need to see all the data. They don't need to see all the inventory data, all the accounting data, the operational data, all that kind of stuff. They really more, more need to worry about the demographic stuff. Someone who's working on inventory, who's trying to optimize the workflow for that, does not need to see customer demographics. So it manages, the business intelligence server manages all of that information. Then we have the delivery side of things. It will track what results are available, who is authorized to actually view those results, and then the schedule upon which those results are provided because it's actually able to deliver results on a specific schedule depending on how the user might have subscribed to uh, the business intelligence server. And coming back to the table really quick, that's what this subscription means in the push option, as opposed to getting an alert whenever there's new information or doing an RSS 
uh, kind of thing. The subscription specifically refers to every X amount of time, like once a week or once a day or something like that. Give me the most up-to-date piece of information. So that's what that subscription would be on a business intelligence server so that if there's a million different updates, you're not constantly getting bombarded with alerts or uh, RSS updates. And then regarding the delivery side of things, it's also going to adjust the allocations with changes in results and users. So as results change, as more different, as more results are available, or as the roles that users have change, maybe someone gets fired, maybe someone gets hired, maybe someone get, gets promoted or takes on a different uh, position in the company, like in, in a sideways direction rather than upwards, um, they're going to need different permissions for a business intelligence server. So all of that needs to be managed by the server itself. So at the very end of this, we have the generic business intelligence system. All of what we had talked about up until the business intelligence server is in the business intelligence application side of things. That's the kind of thing that takes the data, does the analysis of the data, and then produces the result. That result gets passed on to the business intelligence server, which we had just talked about, uh, which contains some metadata. That metadata is the tracking data right here for the um, under delivery, all the stuff that it's tracking and all the stuff that it's updating when new users are added. That is this metadata here in the business intelligence server. And then it's pushing and pulling, it's pushing results and it's handling pull requests to this any device here. This is going to be the computer, the phone, the um, applications that are all trying to access information from this business intelligence server. The application is going to be different depending on what kind of server configuration you actually have. Maybe it's a web browser, maybe it's a Microsoft like SharePoint kind of thing, all that kind of stuff. But the device is then able to actually get that information from the server and then display it to the business intelligence users who are then able to use it to better the company. And this is the entirety of the business intelligence system. So. I know it's been long, I know we've talked about a lot in this chapter, but that is what a business intelligence system is. That all is components that you will have to you know, keep in mind as you start interacting with your information systems, as you start working with maybe even designing some of your own. Uh, if you want to work with this kind of stuff at a bit of a closer level, thinking about the data analysis side of things, looking at data science and computer science are going to be really helpful. Um, and we'll actually learn a little bit more about the computer si science side of things because my next video, the final video related to this chapter, is an addendum that has information about artificial intelligence. And if any of that tickles your fancy, data science and computer science are where you would want to go. Those are both also really useful tools for a business intelligence system. Regardless, with all of that, that has been business intelligence. So thank you all very much for watching.